Today we're going to start a new series where we explore the events leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. Today we're going to look at how the plot to uh, betray Jesus unfolded, and we're also going to look at how he instituted the Lord's Supper, or what we call communion. All right, before we do that, let's read a couple of passages from Luke 22. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was drawing near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. He went away and discussed with the chief priests and the temple police how he could hand him over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him silver, so he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd was not present. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them, and said, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant established by my blood. It is shed for you, but look, the hand of the one betraying me is at this table with me. For the Son of Man will go away as it has been determined, but woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. So they began to argue among themselves which one of them it could be who was going to do this. So both of these passages shed light on the question, why did Jesus die? Now, to begin with, we hear that the, that the chief priests and the scribes are plotting to kill Jesus. Now, this isn't a new development. They've been plotting this for a while, but things are getting more and more out of their control. We could ask the question, why would they want to kill Jesus? He's been doing a lot of good things. He's been healing people. He's been doing things that, that are great. Well, their chief concern, although there were some friction points between the religious elite and Jesus where they they, they ran up against each other and he called out their hypocrisy, their chief complaint, their chief concern was that Jesus was claiming to be God. Now, it's true that Jesus never said the words, I am God, worship me, but he didn't have to because he said so much more and demonstrated so much more through his words and actions about who he was claiming to be, that he may as well have said those words to a first century Jewish audience. Jesus forgave sins. Only God is allowed to forgive sins, and everyone knows that. And because he did that, he was claiming the authority that God has. He claimed authority over scripture. In fact, when they're crying out and saying that he's blaspheming, they're saying that he is claiming to be God. So we can never say that Jesus never claimed to be God. In fact, that that question should just go away. We shouldn't wrestle with that. What we need to wrestle with is either Jesus is God or he's not. Meaning either we believe the things that he claimed are true or we don't. The the scribes and the chief priests were in this category. They didn't believe the things that Jesus claimed to be. So where do we fit into that? And then Judas, the guy who actually betrayed Jesus, he's already a bit of a nefarious character in the story where he he is in control of the money and it seems like he wants to profit off of Jesus. And maybe now he's found a way where he can profit even more. And he goes to conspire with the Pharisees, with the chief priests, with the scribes. And we might be wondering, did, did they really need his help? Well, yeah, they probably did, because the one thing they didn't want to do was just arrest Jesus in broad daylight while he's doing his miracles and teaching, because that would erupt into chaos. They didn't want the crowd to turn on them, so they needed to know where Jesus was going to be in a moment of solitude that they could find him and arrest him. And that was their plan, and of course, that's going to come up a little later. But before that, Jesus is headed into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover with his disciples one last time. Now, the Passover meal is a meal where they remember the exodus from Egypt. 
And it's a time that they remember that they slaughtered a lamb, each Israelite, and placed the blood of the lamb over the doorway of their house so that when the wrath of God passed through Egypt, as God cast his judgment upon Egypt, the wrath of God would pass over the Israelite doors and only affect and only have the judgment upon the Egyptians. And that that blood of the lamb that was over the door protected and covered the Israelite people so that they were safe from from the, the, the wrath of God that came upon Egypt. And so this is what they are remembering as they sit down to celebrate this meal. But Jesus is going to demonstrate that this meal means something even more now, that that, that old Passover celebration really was just pointing towards something better. You see, the covenant that was established by God in the book of Exodus was a covenant that was pointing towards a future where where the covenant would be fulfilled perfectly. And Jesus has walked the earth perfectly, keeping the covenant, keeping the law as a man. Because he is fully God, he is able to walk the earth sinless and perfectly keep the law to the letter so that he can fulfill the law But now he's going to reveal even more detail of what's about to happen as he sits and has dinner with his with his disciples and he breaks bread and he says, this bread represents my body, which is for you. He's right, right, right out saying that I am going to lay down my life and I'm going to do it for you. And in the same way, he takes the cup. And says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, the representation of what I'm about to do. And my blood is shed for you. Now, we can ask the question, why did Jesus die? And we can look at this passage and say, well, the the scribes and the chief priests conspired with Judas so that he would get arrested and they could take him to trial and take him before Pilate and have him crucified. We can go through all those details, but that's not why Jesus died. That's, that, that's all the how, how it all happened. But that's not why he died. Why he died was for you. Why he died was for me. Why he died was for his followers. He laid down his life to, to write a new covenant in his blood where, where now the covering... From, that would protect us from the wrath of God because of our sin was going to come from Jesus' blood. And it wasn't the blood of an animal. It wasn't an imperfect sacrifice that needs to be repeated over and over again like the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. It was the once and final perfect sacrifice for sin that he was going to carry out. So why did Jesus die? It's because we have fallen into sin. It's because we cannot be made right before God because of our sin and because of our brokenness. We cannot get to God. We need God to make the situation right. But God, being a just God, needs to have some penalty paid or God would not be just. So he sent Jesus to be the innocent lamb led to the slaughter And Jesus, being fully God, bore our punishment upon himself so that we could have that covering, so that we would have the wrath of God pass over us and we would receive his protection by receiving the righteousness that comes from Christ. So that's why Jesus died, and that's what we remember when we partake of communion. As Jesus instructs us to do this in remembrance of him, We are remembering his sacrifice and what it means for us that we have been set free from the burden of the penalty of sin and that we can stand before God one day pure as snow because of the righteousness that comes from Jesus because of his sacrifice. Next week, we're going to look at his arrest and his crucifixion. 